Hi, this is Anne, and today I wanted to do a quick flip, flip through of some eco printing that I did and share with you how I did it and uh, what plants were used. There, there are a lot of them are out in the garden now. Maybe you have some of them in your area. Some of them are still going. Some of them, uh, sadly, are starting to go away because they come and go so quickly. So I thought that we would uh, just take a minute to go through these. And first, let me talk about this one because this is going to be different than pretty much all the other ones. This one is one we did in the Eco Printing with an Iron that I did a, a, what, a couple of weeks or a month ago. And I just wanted to do a closer look at how that one turned out. This was the Ajuga. But how beautiful is that? And that the Ajuga is kind of a, a bluish, darkish bluish color in the, the florets, which is here. And then this is the leaves, the greener part. But look at how well it holds the blue color. So I just wanted to kind of show you that. Uh, something else I did in that particular, on that day, but I don't think I filmed it, was this one. But I wanted to show you just because this was deciduous azalea. And I was kind of surprised. I think had I done more ironing with a little less water, that this would be more distinctive. But the orange uh, deciduous azalea, they're, they went kind of a purplish. Whereas the yellow deciduous azalea went yellowish. Because I mixed them both on the same page as a test. And then the last one that I wanted to make a note of, and again, I didn't do it on camera, I did it off camera with the iron, was, I do, I believe anyway, but I wanted to show you how they turned out. But Columbine, this is uh, Columbine, and it imparted, I don't remember what color Columbine, it was probably a more saturated color Columbine, because I usually mean that way. Uh, in any event, though, it kind of went this bluish, greenish yellow. And then this was a, a marguerite type daisy in a purplish color. And then these, uh, this is a red geranium. And again, here's another columbine. So yeah, the columbine uh, worked pretty well. Sadly, uh, they're gone now. They didn't seem to hang around very long. Now this pile that I'm going to show you, and we'll go through it quick because I, I did a lot of them. I did the other day, and I'm doing all my eco printing outside now with the iron, the heat press. I'm hauling it outside when I use that. I do have playlists about eco printing, both with the iron, the heat press, and if you're using the regular pot on the stove or all that. But I've moved everything outside. And doing so, I last, oh, when did I buy this? This was back in 18. Back in 18, I purchased, let me bring this in front of the camera. Uh, sorry, I have to do this awkwardly. But see that pot? It's a roaster pot. Oster roaster oven with self-basting lead 22 quart stainless steel. And so now I use that outside, and I only use it for, for crafts. <laughs> I have a different roasting pan for, for turkeys. And I will put a link to this down below in case you're interested. Ooh, excuse me for bumping the camera. But basically, I, uh, I put bricks down in the bottom to hold it up above the water. Fix this. Because I steam them for 350 for two hours, and I sandwich it between uh, steel or metal racks and cardboard, and then bundle them with string. Now, this paper will just fit into that roasting pot flat. Anything larger, then I would have to roll it around a tube and do it uh, that way, or bundle them like you see in a, a lot of other videos where they, you know, tie them into the bundles and do it. And you can also do fabrics, uh, preferably. Uh, natural fabric, fabrics uh, reputed to work best, uh, but I'm focusing on papers. I will link the paper that I use and the Oster roasting oven that I use down below in the links if you're interested. And I use the same paper for everything, so let's just take a quick look. This is... Um, this is... 
I don't know. Jeez. This is petals from that marguerite daisy that I just showed you on the other sheet a minute ago. And I uh, and then the back side. What I do is I I do my main theme in the in the sandwich, and then I put things on both sides of the sandwich. So all these papers have things on both sides. So you, it's just difficult sometimes to decide which side of the paper that I want to use. But uh, and a lot of times, if you see color in here, it's because of what was on the back side bleeding through. For example, these bluish things is because something from another paper bled through and gave this modeling color and usually between the sandwiches where you've got the main theme I, I usually lean towards ferns so on a lot of these back sides you'll see ferns so that's the back side and that's the front side this you'll see a lot of ligulaire I did did a lot of the similar kinds that's why we'll go through them real quickly but these are ligulaire leaves and you can see how big this is this paper is 9 by 12 and it I just I have a thing about them what can I say they you'll see where they do different interesting things so that that was the main thing and then on this side well this is pretty main too this was coral bell leaf a really big coral bell leaf and it went really nice and green and then here is this is the back side. So the front side, well, I'm not sure which is the front and back, so let me step back. This is the front and the back of the same uh, leaf. I just don't know which one is the front one and which one is the back one. So anyway, the point is, you're seeing a mirror image, and this is how they, they differ in their color. So one goes, goes really good, and then the other one gives you more of a ghost uh, type. Then there's the fern back. Here's another ligulera. And then this is the front and the back of a, uh, if you've watched any of my other eco printing videos last year or the year before, whenever they were, you'll see that I also like lupin leaves because they remind me of a starburst. And again, here's, here's the, front and the, the front and the back, if, that, if, the, if I'm far enough forward on the camera. And then there's the fern that I used on the back. And there's another fern back. And then the main thing on this one was strawberry leaves. And then some fern fronds as filler. I really like the way these ferns turned out. I thought, thought that was really good. And then here's the other side of the one that I just showed you. The same strawberry leaf and then the same fern, just the the other, the flip side. And then on the back of this is maple leaves. And it got several different types of maple trees and they do different things and then the front and the backs also do different things. One side will go more yellow and then the other side goes more of this kind of greenish, deeper greenish color. Fern, another ligulera. Now, and that same fern that I just showed you a minute ago. Look at how well this imprints. Hopefully I can bring it up where it doesn't brown up. But what I really like, and this is the opposite side to this. See, this is this is the one side, and this is the flip side. I'm pretty sure this is the back because of all the veining, and there's the, the stem. This is the front. See how the front goes more of a uniform yellow, and then the back goes more of these rust has more of these rusty bits on them. And what I really like about it is, see how around the edges it looks ruffled and it's green? I think that's the same down here. You see it here? This is really cool. So that's another regular era. Let's see what's on this, this back side. Let's see what I did for the front. Oh, this is um, Siberian iris which are blooming now, only they're starting to go away too. The bearded iris and the Siberian iris are both starting to, to come on. And I actually like the Siberian iris better. Somewhere in here I've got a bearded iris where I just did the florets. But let me bring this closer to the camera. It, it, uh, what I really like about it is, is how it, it's got that nice blue color. 
So that's one side. And then here's the other side of the same thing. Let's see that superior iris. And I hope that I get time to uh, do some more before they go away, because that's the only one I've got, unfortunately. This was, what do they call that? Euphorbia. Euphorbia flower. And it went kind of that rusty yellow color. And then these are from uh, late summer anemone leaves. And then something's given it a bluish color. I bet it's, well, I must have picked up some of the maple leaves from, from different, oh, from this side. This, this is the flip, this is the reverse side of that. And what's giving these this bluish purple color is these uh, maple leaves. That's why you're getting, getting these, these patterns here. And again, that's the, okay. Better speed it up here. I don't think you want to hang all day and doing this. Uh, these are, uh, this is GM. The ones that if you've watched my recent, actually I don't know if I posted it yet. I just did it. I don't know if I posted it yet. But peeking at flowers video, I show you the GM pressed. And then this is the GM eco printed. This is bidden eco printed. Bidden goes pretty reliably, the yellow ones go pretty reliably orangish. And then, oh, and then these, this here, these things, that's a uh, foxglove, pink foxglove. So they do, they do okay. And then here's the flip side of that same sheet that I did. And actually this side's even more pronounced. It's uh, got more... Only I think if I want to show, no, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's the split side of this one. Yeah, there it is. I think. I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's not obsess about it. <laughs> Back side of the fern. Okay, these are. This is the. the uh, bearded iris and you can see they go nice and blue and I just took the florets up I didn't do the whole head because they're really thick and I had so many bundles that I was doing in the pot that day that I I was just going for trying to make my layers not super thick and so I just did the petals these are these are um, carrot leaf uh, pieces of botanical here's the flip side And I'll show you some other carrot leaves uh, that I did more pronounced. Here's some more. Uh, I didn't match up a lot of these because I did a whole bunch of, of maple leaves. I didn't take the time to match them all up. Here's some more coral bell and some different sizes. Just a different arrangement. This is a other a different kind of a maple. This is a more of a lacy leaf type maple than the other one that I showed you. And this is one side. I don't know where the other side is. Maybe we'll come across it. This side goes more yellow. I really like it. Look at how it has all that nice green around the edges. And then the centers kind of go more of that yellowish color. And you can see how they're a little different shape. They're more lace leafy than the other ones. Some more, oh, really, here's some more of that fern that I really, that I thought it did really well. I don't know what kind of fern it is, but it really does well. Some more maple. Some more fern, little fern on the back. More maple. This is supposed to be the other side of that fern that I just showed you. This was the flip side of that other fern that we just looked at, being influenced by the maple that's on the on the under here. It's 
some more maple, fern, maple, fern, maple, fern. I kind of like the way this maple turned out. It's got a little bit more of a watercolor flourish than some of the other ones. And that's cool too. See how where it looks kind of watercolor flourishy around the edges. Oh, here's another uh, Ligulera that I like so much. And another Ligulera. Look at how big those leaves are. They're huge out in the garden. They get they get these really weird daisy-like, I don't know how to describe them. They're not, they're kind of mangly, mangy-looking daisy-like flowers, yellow. I grow it for the foliage more than the flowers. Here's some more of the, uh, that was more of the coral bells and more of the, um, lupin influenced by something purplish in there. And this was the other side. Yeah, this is the flip side of this lupin. More Ligulera. Oh, here's some... Uh, this is strawberry leaf. And you see how this is, this is the, the reverse side of the other. And see how this one just kind of did a ghost print, whereas this one went really rust color. So I thought that was interesting. More fern. This is carrot leaf. Uh, when I when I saw that I didn't have a lot of Queen Anne's lace because they're biennial, and I must be on the off period. I'm not going to get a lot of Queen Anne's lace flowers in my yard this year. I've got a lot of seedlings coming up for next year, but I don't have any that are going to flower. I started to panic. So I actually went to the store, and I bought some carrots. And uh, and I uh, actually I got them at the health food store to try to make sure they didn't have any weird preservatives or anything in it. I cut the tops off about this far into the carrot, and I planted them. And actually, the, the leaves are growing. The point being, because they've already made a carrot last year, well, I don't know if it was last season or earlier this season because I don't know where they came from, but they were already a carrot rather than came from the seedling. I know that they will send up a flower spike, and although they're not as nice as the um, the Queen Anne's lace, they do have really nice lacy uh, little individual florets that I like to press. So I thought, well, if I can't get any uh, Queen Anne's lace in my yard this year, I will uh, do some carrots. The point being, these are the, these are the leaves from from the uh, from the uh, domestic carrot that we eat for our food and you can see they kind of went that yellowish kind of color and it's being influenced probably by, by some maple leaves somewhere and why don't I just go along the side of the road since I've got here's carrot I really like the influence of of the of the maple on the back on this one this one is probably my favorite carrot one why don't I go to the sides of the road and pick uh, pick in, on the public roads and, and pick Queen Anne since we have it all over our area growing wild. Uh, thyme, for one thing. Thyme is, a, is a, not a commodity I have a whole lot of right now. And laziness. I've gotten so spoiled by having Queen Anne's lace in my yard that I've gotten lazy. It's like, oh, I don't want to go out and have to go pick them out in the wild. <laughs> I want them wild in my yard. I know, I know, it's sad. Some more carrot. Okay, some more carrot. Let's move along here. And and I was I was hoping or thinking because I've done Queen Anne's leaves before, and Queen Anne's goes much more green. At least the ones I did before, they went very green. So I was thinking, oh, maybe because they're in the same family, these will go green. But they went more yellowish. So we'll see whenever I get more uh, carrot or Queen Anne lace leaves. If that holds true when I do them again. This one turned out pretty good for the fern. More fern. More carrot. More carrot. More Ligulera. Uh, this is just some more of the, probably the flip side of something we already looked at. And this is the flip side of this guy. More, more curl bells. 
Okay, so that's that's that. I will link to uh, some videos on the most frequently asked questions, which is, what do you do to your paper? I put alum on it. I've got some detailed videos about aluming paper. Uh, if you look at the eco printing playlist, I use the same thing. I spray the paper with vinegar water, or I put the plants in vinegar water before I put them on the paper. Uh, the alum paper is already alumed, and then I sandwich them. Sometimes I will spray it with coffee water, co uh, coffee in a spray bottle uh, also. So don't limit yourself. Just play around. People use all kinds of techniques. All these are natural colors. I didn't use any dyes or anything. Sometimes I, I have played with that in the past, but mostly I uh, just use the natural colors. So thank you for tuning in. Hopefully this has given you some motivation to get out in your yard if you have one or get out in nature, uh, you know, public roads, of course, be, be thrifty with your things that you pick. Don't, uh, as I said before, don't pick the last things because you want to make sure nature keeps going and stay safe. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for tuning in.